and Richard Hauser. Okay. Uh, I'll be 79 in July. Great, great. So, you know, with your, your participation in this project, you know, you heard about it through the Korean War Veteran Association, mm -hmm. I'm sure. How do you feel about participating in the project? What, well, is, what does it this mean? This is fine, to you? but people know. Yeah? Why do you like Especially school? school? School kids know what, what happened. They Why do you want they, them to know? Because there's nothing in their history books here. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little paragraph, that's about it. That there was a Korean War, but most of them don't even know where Korea is. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, I guess, one of the main goals of our project is yeah. to <laughs> expand people's knowledge so in you know, future generations, years from now, when there's a school child who's That's right. doing some research, they can look up your name or <clears throat> type in Korean right. War, and, and hopefully they'll find some quality information well, they, about it. They don't want to teach about wars any, yeah. anymore. Not like when I was in school. We had to learn about the Revolution and the Civil War and the World War I. These kids, don't, they don't have that. Mm -hmm. so. OK, great. So let's get started with you know your life right before the war. What were you What were you doing, and and what I guess um, interested you or caused you to enlist or get drafted, whichever. Well, uh, before well before the war, I was working, of course, and uh, and the war started, and I was I was working at the time and. Uh, shortly after the war started, uh, we got married. And, okay. and uh, so you got married before you shipped out. Oh yeah, before the. That's great. Yeah, before I even got drafted. <laughs> oh, okay. And. Uh, so you promised to come home, and you came home. Well, yeah, I. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I. I really wasn't thinking of of uh, being drafted. I know I would. I had a draft card at the time, and. I knew probably someday I would get caught, but, mm -hmm. and I did. A year after we were married, I, I got a letter, and then they said a month going. later I was, I left for our uh, training camp. Okay. <laughs> it's interesting to hear about um, people that were drafted into the war, because most people associate being drafted with Vietnam, and I guess people overlook the fact that there is oh, yeah. a draft for Korea. No, they were drafted for World War II. Right. And it was continued through Korea and Vietnam. Okay. So how did you feel when you actually got that letter? <clears throat> well, a little upset. <laughs> you know, I, it was something that I was supposed to do. I mean, the government said, that, you know, you would serve time in the military. I knew I had to do it, but I wasn't, I wasn't too happy at the time. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, when I got to, uh, got to a, uh, Fort Devens, Massachusetts, for about three days, uh, I really was, you know, I didn't really care for it. Mm -hmm. But then I decided, uh -oh, you're going to be here two years, and you better start liking it. That's good. <laughs> so you, you kind of convince yourself to I had deal to, with yeah, it. Yeah, you had to do that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And how did your wife feel about it? I don't know, she wasn't too happy neither. Yeah. yeah. She it wanted to upset, start. Upset, upset our life and, yeah. you know, and, uh, we just moved into a little house that we were renting and then we had to move out. And she went back home. Okay. That was okay. the end of that story for a while. Yeah, <laughs> I understand. So, where, where was your basic training? You said Massachusetts? Uh, Fort, no, I went to a, re, uh, a replacement depot in mm -hmm. Fort Devon, Smash, Massachusetts. And then I went, was assigned to Fort Jackson, South Carolina okay. for infantry training. Yeah. And what did you know about the Korean War before you actually got drafted? Nothing. Nothing. I knew there was one. Right. But I guess the media doesn't really... I had, I had friends in it. Uh, a high school buddy of mine. He was in. He got killed in '51. No, '52. He got killed. And you were still in the. I was still in civilian life. 
And you heard about it through his family? Yeah, it was in the paper. Yeah. What was that like? Well, it's hard. Uh, it was just at the time you tried to put it out of your mind. Yeah. So I, just talking to a lot of veterans, it kind of seems like most people didn't really think about the war at all unless they had family or friends in it. Yeah, yeah that, was, that was true. Yeah. yeah. It was so close to World War II, people were, you know, they were tired of four or five years of war, yeah. you know, and now all of a sudden, five years later, you get another war. Mm -hmm. And I think some people just didn't want to really think about it and, you know. Yeah. Yeah. A lot, a lot of us had to. Because <laughs> yeah, it was a real thing. <laughs> All right, so, and you said you spent a month um, in training before you actually... Oh, no, no. I was, I was in Fort Devens, uh -huh. replacement for about a week or so. Oh, okay. Then I shipped down to Fort Jackson. Uh -huh. I was there 16 weeks of training. Okay. Came home for a week and then headed for Korea. Mm -hmm. went, uh, went to the West Coast for a week and then right. overseas. Yeah. How was training? Do you remember any it was tough. stories about it? it or? Was, oh, it was tough. <laughs> it was trying to get you ready, I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you better, they used to tell us, well, you better learn now. Mm -hmm. You won't have any time over there in the war. To, it's not really you know. a kind of on-the-job training no. experience. No, 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 it's, it's get it now. Right. <laughs> Okay. It's one so, thing, they, the military makes you learn fast. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I guess they're good at scaring you into Yeah, it. right, exactly. <laughs> so what was it like when you actually left the West Coast for Korea? Yeah, it was a lonely time, you know. There were some of my friends went with me, you know, that I knew. We were on the same ship. And several of them got left behind <laughs> because there was no room. Oh. Put it on the ship, and uh, they were probably happy about that. I think they were, but they got over shortly they after I got there because ship they for no, they flew. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> they flew over. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so why do you yeah. say it was a lonely? Well, yeah, you're out, out there in the ocean for I don't know, what it was it twenty some days, or, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, then we we got to. Uh, Yokohama, Japan, and that was a rush, rush thing. You get off the ship, up to uh, Camp Drake, do all our equipment and their rifle and ammunition, and back down on another ship, and then we sailed around to uh, Incheon Harbor and anchored way out and came in on landing craft. And then from there by trucks, North. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, oh man, I'm actually. Yeah, going it's, it's to, reality. Yeah. Reality starts setting in. Mm -hmm. Missed home, and yeah. you know, they had some. Yeah. yeah. And how was it when you actually landed in Korea? Scary. <laughs> because you didn't know what, what to expect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I remember we were in trucks heading north at night, and all this flashing. One guy re remarked, said, boy, they're having an awful electric storm up there. The yeah, guy said, yeah. So that's not yeah, an electric there's storm. There's not an electric storm, that's <laughs> artillery. <laughs> so <Yeah>. welcome. <laughs> that's interesting. Well, they had fireworks for you. Yeah, too. they had them that night. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. what were your, did you get a chance to actually observe Korea, the countryside at all? Any impressions from First a impressions? truck? Uh, oh, it was just very antiquated yeah. compared to our life, you know. The, just, you know, everything was dirt roads and yeah. little mud and thatched roof huts. And in Seoul, of course, everything was bombed out. Seoul is practically leveled. Mm -hmm. That's all I saw. Yeah. Um. And so when, I guess, when did you first, you know, you said that reality was setting in when you first got there, but when did you really say, oh, I'm actually going to be fighting, you know, when you were stationed at your camp?
camp or? Visit as soon as we got to a permanent area that we, we were assigned to. Originally, when we got off the ship at landing craft in Incheon, I was assigned to the 3rd Division. And uh, we were all standing there, grouped together. And the uh, uh, jeep come tearing down through, and then officer got out, and he said, where are the 3rd Division uh, replacements? And, and, you know, here we are. And he said, well, you go over to this, you're in the 7th Division now because they needed more replacements. <laughs> so you got to thinking, uh-oh. What do they need replacements what, yeah, for? Yeah, what, what happened? <laughs> yeah. And uh, so then we loaded trucks and we went up there up to the, then scat, we were all scattered, you know, different units and like that. So did you kind of you so you got separated from your your buddies? Yeah, from or? ones that I knew. Yeah, yeah. What like was that? some well, some of them, you know, they went to other divisions. Yeah, you know. but that that was part of the that's that's army. That's the army, but I guess you know you don't necessarily realize that you're going to be splitting up if you kind of. Well, you don't at first, but then when you do, okay, you got to make the best of it. You deal with it. Yep. That's right. So what was it like when you first got to camp? Well, it was no really a camp. I, well, a tent city. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. It's uh, pretty well welcome, you yeah. know. Hot food? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had hot food. Uh, and where where yeah, was it? It was up in, uh, up in what they call the Chorwan Valley, was he called the Iron Triangle, mm -hmm. which was a portion it was the U.S. Army and the other attachments were uh, <coughs> maintain, maintaining that triangle. And it started with Pyongyang at the top of the point of the triangle, and Churwan is on the left, and then Kumwa was on the right. That was, mm -hmm. was defended because it was the corridor of the soul. Of, Valley where they could, mm -hmm. you know. And you were, so your responsibility was to. Our responsibility was hold uh, those three sides. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and so, what year were you actually, or like what month and year did you actually arrive at your tent city? I read, uh, April, I believe. I think it was April. Fifty three. Three. Fifty three. Yeah. It was a. It was uh, the war was kind of winding down at that time. But there's still fighting going on. Oh yes, sporadic, up and down the line. What was it like to be on the line? Did you fight on the line? Yeah, it was up on the line. What it was, was that uh, like? Yeah, it's scary. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I mean, so you're, you're. If anybody tells you you're not, you're, they're not scared. You're crazy. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> well, I mean, how could you not be scared? You know, there's bullets going That's right. everywhere. Yeah. Uh -huh. And. I was there with the. It was, I was up there until the end of the, the uh, war, the, mm -hmm. when they had the ceasefire. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was the last, on Port Chop Hill, that was the last battle they had. It last, lasted about, oh gosh, six or eight days, mm -hmm. something like that. What was that like? Oh. Could you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I don't like that. Okay, no problem. Um, so, I've heard that the harshest battles were those that were kind of right before the ceasefire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were pushing to get more territory. Yeah. And uh, they, they did, they pushed, pushed my unit off the hill once, and then I went back and took it, took it back, but then actually uh, our commander said, well, he's not going to waste any more lives, and we'll just abandon that. Mm -hmm. Because Porkchop Hill sat, um, most of it was in no man's land out there. You're completely surrounded at all practically surrounded by 
enemy, mm -hmm. the Chinese. So he just said, that's, that's it. Mm -hmm. There's no point in China. Get out of here, there's no point. <laughs> so they ended up, they ended up getting that. Mm -hmm. but, but anyway, we got out of there. Yeah. Went back south a ways. And, that must have been a, kind of a relief to get out of there. Oh, was it ever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. It sure was. So, when <coughs> you were fighting or when you were in the country, did you get a chance to um, interact with any of the South Korean Army or the Korean service? Korean service. We had, uh, I have had some pictures over there. I, I think I got, we had three, four, four all together, at least while I was with the unit uh, that worked and did things, you know, for us. And, uh, then they wash your clothes, and they would dig whatever, you know. Dig trenches? And trenches, work, clean them out, and, you know, fill up sand, sandbags. And they must have been they nice were ni They were ni know. nice people, nice, real nice. And Why were they nice? Just because they're, they're, they're very pleasant. Mm -hmm. so very, gotta, very industrious and strong, you know. They just had a different attitude than, than we do. <laughs> what, what kind of... I, well, they're... Let me see. Well, they, they didn't complain. Yeah. Let's put it that way. They didn't complain when they were asked to do something. They did. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's interesting. So, I, you know, I knew them. They're real nice, nice guys. So did you get a chance to interact with them apart from while you were actually in battle? Or, you know, well, they stayed with us even afterwards. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them went home because he had finished his time working in the KSCs, mm -hmm. in the Korean Service Corps. And then the other th three younger ones stayed with us. And I think when I left, Korea, there was only two of the boys left. So how was but it like? Did you learn things from them? Or did, you know, was it a good experience I, I, to kind I, of exchange cultures at all? Or? Well, yeah, we talked, you know, and in that. Uh, they were a lot of fun, really. So they were fun? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why is that? No, they're just fun, you know. They, they'd laugh a lot with us. And, mm -hmm. and that, you know, they, we appreciated having them. At least I did. And uh, we paid them every, every month. We paid them and they were very grateful. So it, it must have been a relief to actually be able to maybe talk to someone a little different or have some fun, you know, in the midst of yeah. this hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You know. That'd be interesting if you still remember yeah, the names yeah, to yeah. them up. Especially the younger ones, yeah. you know. But they're probably pretty close to my age now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Maybe they're having an interview it's talking good, about the American soldiers that, could be. that they're living that, next that to. It could be. <laughs> so what about any other foreign troops? Uh, we had the Ethiopians who were attached to us. Oh, I haven't heard that before. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. they were attached to us. And um, I did meet a couple of them, but not, not very much. They were, they kind of kept to themselves. Mm -hmm. And I met, I met, uh, met some of the um, Turks, mostly dri uh, truck drivers. Mm -hmm. I've heard the Turks were good fighters. Excellent. So were the Ethiopians. Mm -hmm. Why were they just no they, fear? They had that knife, yeah. and the Chinese didn't like that because they cut their ears off. <laughs> really? <laughs> Interesting. What was that? Why would they do that? They string them on a thong. <laughs> Can you imagine? You see this guy walking around with all these blackened ears hanging on a thong. Wow. After so many, he went home. Uh -huh. He rotated home. Wow. So it's like their point system. <laughs> there is, yeah. So they were right out there all the time. So they're on the front lines the whole time, huh? Yeah. Interesting. But they were nice people too. Very nice. So you didn't pick up that that trait to no no no, no, no. 
<laughs> no, no, no. And let's see, what other ones? I met the Aussies. There's an Aussie unit uh, base or camp near us. We'd see them once in a while. So. That must have been a little easier to communicate with them. Well, the Ethiopians spoke perfect English. Oh, yeah? Oh, sure. They were very, pretty well educated. And then, uh, we also had a Colombian battalion attached to us, but it was off limits. They weren't too, too good. Uh, at least they were helping, they were, I guess. They were criminals. Oh, <laughs> most, so. I think most of them were criminals, but we're they would they would steal stuff from you. Like food or yeah, everything. They were kept way away from us. Mm -hmm. I guess. Never seen much of them. Situation in their own country yeah. probably wasn't very good, so. Yeah. At the time, probably, I, I don't know. Yeah. Never met any, so. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's really interesting because I don't think I've talked to another veteran who's actually had the opportunity or the, the experience with so oh, many yeah? different, oh, well, different countries, soldiers. Yeah, we did, because they were, well, like the Ethiopians, they were close, mm -hmm. close to us. And, uh, well, let's see, the Greeks, the Turks, they were, yeah, I forget. One or the other is, was attached to the 25th Division. And I had a buddy in that division. And, but the, the, Tur the Turks, if they saw you along the road, they'd love to give you a ride in their truck. They were so proud of their truck. They had good trucks? They same as ours, <laughs> same thing, yeah. and they just were proud, yeah. and they uh, they loved to have their picture taken with their truck so they could send that home to the family. Mm -hmm. I wonder why. I don't know. It's just it, that's the way they were. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's great. Yeah. So, what? Um, so you were there from April '53. To May, almost the end, about the mid May of '54. So you were there pretty, pretty long time after yeah. the ceasefire. Yeah. Yeah. Oh well, yeah. What were you doing then? Moving around different areas. For what purpose? They, they had us on one. When we first moved back, <coughs> we started digging another, uh, another trench line. Then we would move back to another area and just kind of lay around, do nothing. In case something escalated That's all. again? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. It ended up at, uh, let's see, it was, we, I ended up in the wintertime there of 54, uh, down at Camp Casey. It was a huge flat area. and. Uh, they had made it into a camp and named it after somebody, I guess. And uh, I was down there for a little while during the winter, and then we went back up to another another area. It's hard right now to put that area in close to some other village or something, you know, uh, that I knew. Because it, you never knew where you were going. Yeah. And, uh, so we went back up to another area. And that's where I rotated home from there. That was it. So it must have been nice, at least, you know, granted you were moving around, but you weren't fighting. No, no, it was quiet. And at times we had to contend with the North Korean prisoners that uh, Sigmund Rhee released from the prisons. <laughs> mm -hmm. And they were all over the countryside there they were stealing food and yeah, probably yeah. hungry. Yeah. So he released them in. Yeah, right. Shortly after the ceasefire. Yeah. Yeah. And did you get a chance to interact with any of the Korean civilians while you were moving around to different villages? No. Or no. We, we would see them, you know. Yeah. Uh, if you were in a truck or something, you're passing through a village or something, mm -hmm. but. Uh, Never really got to talk to the civilians uh, in villages at all. Yeah. 
I mean, when, when the ceasefire came, the, let's see, I can't think where the area we moved to. Well, anyways, the, uh, some of the, the South Korean people who had fled north, from the north, and they had this land, their farmlands were up in where we were, and all the fighting was going on, and they rushed back in. And uh, the minefields hadn't been cleared yet, and they were going into these minefields and get blown up. That's scary. Yeah, it, you know, it, they wanted to get back to their their land. And they thought it was over. Well, it was over, you know, but they didn't pay any attention to the wire that was around some of the minefields. Of course, some minefields were abandoned and never marked. Unfortunately, they got into them hmm. and saw that happen. How was that? That was sickening. I mean, these poor people wanted to get back to their property and they're getting killed. It must have kind of taken its toll seeing so much death and... Oh, yeah. Yeah, it, it gets to you. Yeah. Did you have uh, some close buddies or fellow soldiers that were killed in action? Ah, uh, just one, one guy that went over with us. He was from training camp. Uh, never forget his name, Joe Tricomi. He was a, uh, a singer. He was a nightclub singer, and he uh, got drafted. He had his chance to go to special services. And no, he stayed with the group. He ended up with the 25th Division, and he was in Chow Line one day, and a sniper got him through the head. Wow. That was it. He had a chance even over there to go special services. Mm -hmm. He wanted to stay with his But he stayed, he stayed with the guys and got killed. What does what the special services do? Entertainment. Mm -hmm. Like if a USO group came over from the States, they may have some guys that could play instruments or... So that's a big decision that he made. Yep. Uh, he made the decision. Yeah. So that's what happens. I guess that goes to show you how the brotherhood that's formed among yeah, the soldiers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. So... Do you think, I mean, that or maybe the minefield experience, do you think that was maybe the hardest experience for you throughout the war? A lot of it, yeah. That and, of course, kind of, there was constant shelling there at one period of time, you know. So. All right, well, let's, let's switch moods a little bit. What about the, the happiest point of the war? What was the most rewarding part? Oh, just, well, we've... We had a couple of parties yeah. <laughs> after the war. Well, you <laughs> well we got it. We were getting a ration of beer. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, you guys did hard work. You did good work, so you yeah, need to celebrate, so, yeah. I guess, right? Yeah. I got pictures of that I didn't bring. <laughs> oh, that was one of the perfect yeah, pictures. <laughs> our, we have a party for our sergeant. <laughs> he was going home. <laughs> we had a party for him. Yeah. Yeah, be a good time. <laughs> it's almost bittersweet, you know. You you're happy to leave. You're happy to see other people leave. Yeah. But then you know it's kind of like this group separating. Yeah, yeah. But some would go home. I think a couple went went home ahead of me. Mm -hmm. I don't know how they figured the rotation system, but anyways. So how? Um, how was it when you found out you were going home? Oh boy, I dropped everything. I yeah. said, that's it. Because <laughs> a, a, a buddy of mine, he was a radio operator. And we were uh, down in Chow Line one, one afternoon late. And uh, he was always on the tail end coming out of the radio truck because he had to stay on the radio until he got relief. You know? He came down and he said, hey, How's her? He said, we're, uh, we're rotating home. I said, ah, 
No, no. no. He's heard of that too many he's, times. No, he says, I got the message. I'm going down and give it to the, to the company commander now. I said, when? He says, two days. Wow. I said, oh, boy. It's going to be the longest two days of your life. Oh, what's it ever? <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, two days later, we were on the train. That's great. Yep. So you're happy to return home, see yep. the family, yep. the wife? Yep. Yeah, in uh, Seattle. Seattle, Seattle. Yeah, we just went to Fort Lewis. We were only there for a few hours, and then we, we flew home mm -hmm. from uh, Boeing airfield. They had a bunch of airplanes there they had refurbished and they flew us all back. And at that point were you discharged? Or? No, no. I got a 30-day leave and uh, then I had to report back to uh, Fort Devens, Massachusetts as a uh, platoon leader in a training company. Because okay, so you are training new soldiers? Yeah. Yep. And how long were you doing that for? Ooh. Five months. Five months. About five months. So it's a long time, but better than fighting in Korea. Oh, yeah, because we were living together. We had a, an apartment with my other buddy who went to the 25th. The four of us lived together. Oh, that's we great. had fun. That's great. <laughs> Exchange your memories, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so how was it when you first saw your wife come home? Oh, it was great. Yeah? Of course, she, I was late getting in from, on the airplane. But yeah. <laughs> Another brother, another brother and I got into the bar too much. <laughs> Missed our airplane. Yeah. Well, <laughs> she probably was saying, you, you left she was here for 14 months, you have to make up for yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> Did you yeah. have a chance to exchange letters with her while you were over there? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah, we wrote back and forth. Yeah. I got packages. Oh, yeah. that's nice. Yeah. A little yeah. sense of home while you are over mm -hmm. there. Yeah, and when I worked for I worked for Carrier when I got dra uh, drafted, mm -hmm. and uh, the company would send me a package about once a month. Cause they, nice. they they had this one gentleman that that was all his job was mm -hmm. to take care of the fellows in the service. That's good that they do. Yeah, I've never yeah. heard of that before. It, I don't think anybody ever did it yeah. after that. No. That's nice that the company mm -hmm. kind of tries to take care of their former employees. Yep. They'd send you little things, you yeah. know. Yeah. I wonder yeah, if that happens is. nowadays. Oh, gosh. I, I don't know. I can't even say. I haven't heard of I it. I mean, if it wasn't for different groups getting different things together, you know, to send over to the fellows over in Iraq and Afghanistan and yeah. that, it's about the same thing. Yeah, yeah. But it's not a company really doing it. <laughs> At least I've never heard of the company. Yeah. It would be nice if they did it, you know, just... Kind of it's, it's a good gesture. Of the well, certainly, because the company, if if you are, if you go in the service from your company, the lo there was a law that said that they had to take you back okay. when you got out. You got your job back, your original job. Mm -hmm. I don't know what they do today. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Either. Things are so messed up. But, yeah. you know, but I came back, and when I got discharged. I got my job back. Yeah. They had to let another guy go mm -hmm. or transfer him, but I went back on where I left. Mm -hmm. And what was that like? Did people <laughs> know what you went through, or was it just kind of like... You know, some people didn't even know where I was. Yeah. Say, Korea, what? What's that? Yeah. Nobody. They didn't know. And how does that make you feel? Yeah, I can go say it. I, have bad words for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, when I came home, I was on leave and I had my uniform on. And I stopped in the diner over in Onondaga Hill. And they said, Where have you been? Hmm. And I got a uniform on. Where have I been? You said you haven't heard about this war going on? Yeah. I said, I just got home from Korea. I've heard too many oh. stories. Oh. Oh, you were? Yeah. So nonchalant. Yeah. Oh, well. So it's, it's interesting. I mean, you, you spoke to the fact that the population wanted to kind of get rid of the memory of war. Yeah, they, didn't, they just didn't, didn't want to hear about it. Mm -hmm. And I think if you 
research the newspapers, the local, that you won't see an awful lot of that was mentioned about Korea. There was? There wasn't. There was not there. No. Yeah. In the beginning, yes. And later on in the paper, not much. Mm -hmm. Maybe if a fellow got killed, local guy got killed. That's it. That's about it. Not like World War II, where every single day. But the only thing I've, I've got a copy of it, it was the newspaper, 1953, Memorial May, in May, commemorating, commemorating Memorial Day, mm -hmm. and they had the pictures. There were 60 Onondaga County residents killed in the Korean War. And they had a big write-up in the paper with their names and pictures again and, and all that. And uh, that's the only thing I ever saw. At least I guess they were lucky to even get that recognition. Yeah. And there's, there was actually, I think, 107 killed. There. <laughs> so how did... You know, when you're kind of adjusting to your civilian life and over the years, how, how do you feel that the, your experience in Korea affected that life or impacted you? I, I don't know. It's, just, it's hard to, for me to think about it. I'll, be honest with you. I just came home and you know got discharged and went back to my job and got on. So did you kind of yeah, try to forget about it? Or? Well, did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you try, but it stayed with you. Yeah. It's never left my mind. Of course. So what do you think about? Everything. You never know. One day to the other. Yeah. There's always a time, a day, when I think about something or somebody, you know, mm -hmm. something happened. Yeah. Is that hard to, to deal with? Or do you... At times. Yeah. It's, uh, that's what happens. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess these memories that you have, are, are most of them kind of hard memories to think back on, or do you no, still think ones. of some... No, there's the good ones. Yeah. You know, you think of good ones, bad ones. I guess it's important to concentrate on the good ones. You try. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was mind-boggling. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't believe it. I, you know, landing at Incheon, and I'm thinking, here's this huge airport. And I'm thinking... I went right through this area on a landing craft. <laughs> there was nothing there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's great. That's interesting. Beautiful airport. Yeah. Then we when we boarded our buses to go into Seoul. It had gotten dark. And we're traveling down this highway, and there's all these lights all over the place. And I never saw a light in Seoul when I was there at night. Yeah. And, uh, so what does that mean to you? I mean... I, it, it, probably... I, it, it just, I'm thinking, my God, these people have progressed all this, all this way mm -hmm. in a short time, really. Mm -hmm. Very short time. Very short time. And then we get to the hotel, <laughs> and I went up to our room, and I looked out the window, and I looked across the city, and I see all these lights. It just, I couldn't believe it. Must have been a beautiful sight. It was. It was beautiful. And then when it comes, you know, daylight, it was more beautiful. Mm -hmm. Really, I couldn't pick out any place, anything that I remember, mm. other than Mount Namsan. Yeah. That was the only place I remember, you know, could really remember seeing. Yeah. I guess the mountains don't go away. No, no, <laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> Then, we, then when we went down on the bus touring there, uh, went across the bridge over the Han River. I remember crossing that bridge, one of them. You know, and uh, 
Thank you. All these buildings build, <laughs> build up high rises and that along the river. Yes. It's it's wonderful. Yes. And it's a safe city. I talked to a young girl a couple of years ago at the fair. She had just come back from Korea. She was in the military. And she said, for a girl, it was the safest city in the world. She said, I can walk around at night and I, I, I was never bothered. Mm -hmm. and so she loved it there. Mm -hmm. and, that's, and we enjoyed it very much. And that's partly in tribute to what you and What we did. Your, what your that's what did. we did. So Help the city save the people, and and they become very prosperous. Mm -hmm. You got to give them a lot of credit. And this trip was a KWVA sponsored trip. No, it was a uh, Korean War veterans. Mm -hmm. uh, did you ever hear of uh, military return for tours sure. out of Virginia? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we went with them. Mm -hmm. There's 149 of us. All former veterans. Yep. And their wives. That's great. Yeah. That's great. I think that's great that you had the opportunity to return. Mm hmm. Yeah. Really, really, really enjoyed it. So, you know, you spoke to the development of Korea and mm -hmm. Seoul. What do you know about, what can you speak about the contrast to North Korea? Oh, good heavens. They're still in the day when I was there. Yeah. Really. They're in the, still in the day that I, when I was there. Why is that? <laughs> Dictatorship. Yeah. That wacko they got for president. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you foresee any changes coming at all? Or? I doubt. As long as it <coughs> stays in that family, it will never change. Mm -hmm. I don't believe. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I really don't know. I'll, pre I'll never see it. Yeah. I don't believe I'll ever see it. So, I guess, you know, to kind of wrap up, I want to, you know, get your, your impressions just thinking back on, on the war and your experience, if, if you have any opinion about the legacy of Korean War veterans in general that they've left on soldiers or on America. Or, how you feel about you know being proud to be an American soldier in that, during that time? Well, I, I've always felt like I've been very proud of it. Mm -hmm. Only because my family was a lot of my dad's World War One, and I got cousins that were in World War Two, and mm -hmm. a couple of them, like I was, in Korea, Vietnam. Mm -hmm. So you're a war family. Yeah, it's about, yeah. One cousin's a Pearl Harbor survivor. He's passed on now, but his granddaughter, she's in the military. Mm -hmm. so, so it keeps going, keeps going. How about your children? Nope. You said, I'm not letting you nope. get in there. No, <laughs> I didn't say. No, I, I told my son to go down and sign up for the draft. Well, we all have he to did. do that. Yeah. So, <laughs> <coughs> so, any, right, so in conclusion, I'm just wondering, you know, as, as I discussed earlier, you know, when school children are looking up, doing research, or, or any, you know, adults are even doing research on the Korean War, if, if you could maybe elaborate on, you know, one message that you'd like to kind of stick with future generations that they, they'd see when they... I think it, well, it should be within, within the school curriculum mm -hmm. studies. <laughs> it's uh, I don't know social studies or whatever history history I should say. Mm -hmm. So it should be discussed in the same light as all the other wars that. Yes. There's not just yes. an, a yes. blank space in between World War Two and Vietnam. I don't want to make a bunch of wimps. Yeah. That's so that worries me. Mm -hmm. We're creating a the. Society of wimps. How so? They're not. 
Well, they're in a, uh, today you can't force them to do anything, which is you, you get drafted, you're being forced, right? It's only my opinion. Yeah. Everybody should do it. Yeah. Well, some countries still force their citizens to do that. Sure, that's right. I commend them for doing that, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's interesting. So maybe not necessarily even just to go into war, but just to kind of learn the discipline of the army life. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. At least put someone through boot camp. Make a man out of you. Interesting. That's good to know. <laughs> maybe I'll enlist in it and see what happens. Good idea. <laughs> so how about before we end, we can just oh, this, take this, us through some of these pictures that you uh, have. This, uh, this is just downtown Seoul. When I, one, one day that I was there. A couple old pictures. Mm -hmm. So that's a, that's a military vehicle? Yeah, that's, I don't know what one it is. I was just walking around town. I took a car. Oh, but it looks nice. So yeah, it was cleaned up a bit. Mm -hmm. there, there were areas where there's some building. This is way I don't know where it was in there. Way off in the like a suburb, I guess. Oh, and then you saw. So that. is this your you taking these pictures? Yeah, I took them. Yes, yeah. that's pretty cool. I had one day to went back there, and. Uh, this is R and R in Japan. Yeah, yeah, you yourself? Yeah. That's me. That's that's great. You look like a confident young man. How, yeah. <laughs> how old are you in this picture? Oh gosh. Twenty. Twenty. That's it. You look older. I aged. <laughs> I'm not saying you look older in this picture. <laughs> <laughs> One of the areas I haven't, haven't got the faintest idea. So is this maybe where the soldiers were stationed? Or? Yeah, that's where we had. That's a. Looks like a kind of a, a prone area to an ambush. With a well, it's a valley. There. It's a little valley in there. So you, I guess, you had all of this. Well, there's a, there a road that went up through there. Mm -hmm. And this, this is up near Fort Chap Hill. Okay. That's a. Okay. There's a personnel carrier bringing dead and wounded back. That's the age. That was an aid station. Mm -hmm. And these are the makeshift roads that well, that were was built, a or? track, like a little dirt road going from the main road in. Mm -hmm. It was rainy. Uh, I could tell. Right, you right could see. Monsoon time. Oh no. That doesn't help with no, the mud. condition. No, the mud. Uh -huh. So did you have adequate you know, boots and socks and everything? Well, I had boots. I, had no, I didn't have any rubber boots. Yeah. No. That's what I've heard. Leather, when, leather boots, that's all you had. I've heard the most important thing is to have a change of socks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It does. Yeah. Okay. Keep your, keep your feet dry. So we're going to... Let me let the print whatever they want. Yeah, we're going to take you back and uh, go through some more pictures okay. and, and mm -hmm. anything else that you brought. All right. But in the meantime, I really appreciate you coming. Same here. It's been Thank you. a real pleasure.